Hi everybody, welcome to my 11th Axial Bar video. In this video, I'm going to be solving this question you see here. I'm going to be finding the internal normal forces, the displacements, I'm going to plot them, and then I'm also going to find the magnitude and location of delta max. If you want to know something else about axial bars, feel free to check out any of my other axial bar videos. So the first step to find n, like we always do, we need to make cuts in this piece here and take a look. So every time you make a cut, that means the condition has to change. So in this piece here, this first chunk, the conditions are the same. All right, the, the applied force is the same equation. So that's where we're going to make our first cut. Then we go to here. Well, look, the area changes, and also you have a different Young's modulus for this piece. We we'll make a cut there as well. And of course, here we're adding a force, so we make a cut here as well. So the way we look, or look as in which way do you draw your free body diagram. In this situation with a bar in between two walls, you always want to look in the same direction when you make your cuts. And that goes for every single cut you make. And you'll see why I do this in a later step. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay? So let's take a look at the first free body diagram. Go like that. And this piece here. There we go. And then of course we're going to have the reaction here. Let's just call it R1, N1, and then you're going to have some bit of distributed load here. All right. Q, or not Q, it's 5X. Okay. So doing our, what we always do, sum of the forces, X equals 0. We see that N1 plus the integral of 5x minus R1 equals 0. And we have to integrate this because this is the distributed load. All right. So in this case now, N1 equals to R1 minus 2.5x squared. Okay. This is N1. Notice how we have it in terms of just the one reaction here. We're going to do that for every single one of our internal normal forces. We're going to have it in terms of just one of the reactions. Moving on to a second free body diagram. With this piece this way. So go back to the old stick and ball here. Makes it easier for me. I don't have to draw out all the different diameters and things. R1 and 2. And of course we have this distributed load over the whole piece up to a certain point here. All right, so once again, label directions, sum up the forces in the x in this situation, n2 plus the integral of 5x. In this case, it's not to some arbitrary x, it's actually the full amount of force because we're making the cut after the force has ended. So we're going to say from x equals 0 to x equals 5 because if we take x to start here between x equals 0 and x equals 5 that's just a range where that applied load is applied on. Alright so n2 plus this integral minus r1 equals 0. And Going through and solving this n2 equals r1 minus 125 by 2. No. Box them off nicely. And we have one more free body diagram left to do of the third and final cut. So at this point, you're probably going to be tempted just to quickly look toward the right support there. But keep your head down and keep looking toward the one support. It'll make your life easier when we go to the displacement to find our some answers here. And I'll explain why when we get there. Our third free body diagram, biggest chunk yet. A reaction and three. All right, so it's essentially the same as two. And now we just have another force this way of 15 kilonewtons. So all of these things here right now are in terms of kilonewtons. Keep that in mind for later on. All right, and three. Minus 15 
plus this bit here because that was the integral solved. So it's basically this minus 15, but it's always good just to work through it. N3 is equal to R1 plus 15 minus 125 over 2. All right, I'm just keeping these components separate for now. If it makes you confused, add those numbers up. Okay, there we go. There's all the internal normal forces. But wait, it's all in terms of the one reaction that to support. So we could go ahead and plot it and just keep R1 as a variable, but let's solve for R1. All right, now the only way you can do that, like I discussed in the previous videos, is by taking a look at the displacements. So since this bar, if you will, is stuck between two walls, we know that the sum of the displacements between here and here is going to be zero. All right, so we can write that very simply. The sum of the displacements between x equals zero and 10, all right, up to the full length of the bar there, five plus two and a half plus two and a half, it's 10. It's got to be zero. All right, and now we can rewrite that. If the sum of the forces between x equals zero and 10 is zero, that means the sum of the forces, x equals zero to five, the delta, plus the sum of the forces between x equals five and 7.5, plus x equals 7.5 to 10. And you might be wondering why am I doing it this? Well, if you look carefully, each one of these ranges here it corresponds to each one of my internal normal forces and where they are acting on the bar. Okay, that's going to be useful. Now we know that d delta is n as a function of x dx over e a. Now these are both technically functions of x too if you want to complete this equation. But in this question here, our e and our a are constant, so I'm going to leave that out. Okay, now we've plugged those all in there. But I'm just going to skip one step ahead and say for this piece here, that's just going to be n1, right? Between 0 and 5. So I'm going to go ahead and plug n1 straight away into our equation. So the integral from 0 to 5 of r1 minus 2.5x squared dx over e of that piece, a of that piece. So e1, a1. I'm just going to leave the numbers out because that just takes time to plug in and we all know what they are, right? They're just up here. The integral from x equals 5 to 7.5 of n2. What was n2? That was this one here. All right. R1 minus 62.5 dx over e2a2 plus the final bit of displacement that was summing up from x equals 7.5, 10. That's going to, of course, be that range is where N3 is acting on. So we're going to put N3 in there, which is just this. All right, so it turns out to be R1 minus 47.5 dx over E3A3. Okay, and this all has to equal zero. Now here you see the usefulness of keeping all of our free body diagrams by looking only to the left-hand side because now we have all internal forces only if, in terms of one reaction. So if we integrate this, we can solve for R1 because that's the only thing that we don't know. Once we know R1, ta-da, we can go back and find every single one of our internal normal forces. Once we know R1, we can plug it right back into this equation here and find our displacements because this here is really just our displacement equation. So the key in this situation or the trick, if you will, to solving this question, find all your reactions, or find all your internal forces in terms of the reaction, substitute into your displacement equations, and then solve. So we can integrate all of these. I'll just write out the integral form of these. And I've uh, plugged in some of the values here. So, eight, 10 to the minus 11. I'm just gonna speed through this. Now we integrate this because 1 over Ea, that's this piece here. Now R1 and this all falls under the influence of the dx. So it's R1x 
minus 2.5x cubed by 3 plus, now this here, r1 is going to be a constant, this is a constant, so really this whole thing is a constant. I could have done this without the integral and just plugged in the length, but I just wanted to do it to be as consistent as possible. And of course, sorry, x equals 0 to 5 times x, all right? E2, A2, evaluated between x equals 5 and 7.5 plus x, E3, A3, evaluated between x equals 7.5 and 10. I kept it all in terms of x because this is our displacement equation that will help us graph it out later. All right, now, in order to find what r1 is, you just need to solve this equation where it equals 0. So you could expand it all out and do all that business. I would recommend just plugging this in on your calculator and then, or Desmos or some other graphing program and then just finding where the whole works equals 0 and then just take that number. All right, find out where it crosses the x-axis. So turns out r1 equals 37.1 kilonewtons okay so now we can go back and find all of our normal force equations because we had them here we plug in n1 into each of those and we get our answers n1 and 2 plugging in r1 just into that first equation and n3. Alright, these are all in terms of kilonewtons. Just remember that later. So if we want to quickly graph this, look something like this. Alright, 5, 7.5, 10. And it's going to go down like this, turning up at some high value. It's a quadratic, x equals 0, it goes there. All right, just like this. And then, of course, we remain down here at negative 25 and jumps up to negative 10.4. All right, this is N. Now, to find the displacement, we're going to take R1 and put it into here. So the displacement between 0 and 5 can be described by this equation right here, just like that. Since we know R1, we can just plot the graph as well, right? Now, note this interesting point right here. So it's 0 at x equals 3.85 meters. All right, so now we've integrated the normal force equation. Now we're going to get a delta equation. I'm plugging R1 into this equation here. This will give us the equation for section 0 to 5. This gives us the equation for 5 to 7.5, and the same for this. We can graph this out, and it's going to look like this. Goes up, goes down, goes on a steep angle here, and then a relatively shallow angle as it goes off toward the end there. All right, that makes sense because this is great in magnitude, so it's going to be steeper, less in magnitude, less steep. All right, let's quick color this in. And the point of interest I talked about before is actually the maximum value here, which makes sense. You know, in math, when the derivative of a function equals zero, it has a maximum or minimum value. So we know that n is the derivative of this, and equals zero, so it has a maximum at that point. The maximum is 3.81 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, and of course it occurs at x equals 3.85. All right? 3.94 times 10 to the minus 5. And this point here is, well, it's not really so important. You can go through and solve for each of these values along here. It's just good to get a general idea of what's happening. All right, so just to recap, when you have this bar between the walls, find all your internal forces in terms of one reaction, plug it into your displacement equation, solve for that reaction, then go back and find your normal forces and your displacements and plot them. All right, hope this helped. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much.